So we got a new project here today. Um, this is off of a woods finish mower. The bearing spindles completely gone out of it. It happened to do it while I was mowing the field and it made a god awful noise. Then all of a sudden you could see the thing shaking like crazy. So I knew something was wrong. So we ended up getting it apart and uh, I just brought this all home with me so I can get it fixed up here. So. I never had this part. Um, in fact, that I'm having a hard time finding what kind of mower it is or the model of it. Um, it's probably like a six foot wide, maybe seven foot wide mower. It was built back in the 60s, I'm pretty sure. It used to be you know, an old state mower that they used to mow the sides of the roads with. And uh, we ended up getting it to do the field. Well, any help on identifying the model would be great. It looks like I found a CA that had the same type of spindle setup on it. So I'm going off that with the diagram. So they're supposed to be like a, like a set screw and a uh, bushing or whatever goes inside here. That's gone. That's completely gone. Um, but it looks like you take its nut off and then it's just bearings. It looks like it all kind of slides apart. I'm sure it's not going to be that easy. I'm sure either going to have to press it or uh, heat it to get it apart because it don't look like it's ever been changed and I see you know like these bolts here somebody had welded them on I don't know if they did that to keep it from backing out or whatever they did but you know so I'm gonna have to grind these off because I'm gonna take the blades off of it so you know it's been hacked on for how many years long before us we got it and stuff so I say let's get started on taking it apart um, I already did get this not broke or loose. It actually came loose really easy, which I was kind of shocked, which would make sense because if I'm understanding this correct, you know, there's a tapered bearing here and a tapered bearing here. So this guy here adjusts your, uh, like on a wheel bearing on an old boat or uh, an older car, you use this to, you know, for your play. Your, can't think of the word for it, but, but you use this nut to tighten it up you know, you probably tighten it up to a certain amount and then you back it off a little bit, and, you know. So we'll go ahead and take care of all that. But uh, all in all, it's not in terrible shape. But so like I said, I already got this broke loose. So we can take this off. And it's not a complete hex knot either. You can see it's kind of oddball shaped, but, and everything's super greasy on it, but that's a good thing. So this is where I'm not sure how this comes apart. It looks like it's uh, rusted on there pretty good. So maybe what I'll do is try to figure out a way to get this into press and hold it under here somehow and see if I can press this out. So. We're going to go ahead and get the blades off to get it all out of our way. So this in here, like I said, it was welded on, so we had to cut it, cut it off. All right, so we got those blades out pretty quick. Um, 
I'm assuming these two guys don't come out. Like I said, I'm not having good luck with diagrams, so I don't I don't know. Uh, but it looks like you just turn them aside, and then you pop the pin out. And these pins are they look like they're tapered. At least this one, you can see it's tapered more. They're actually worn pretty good, so I'm debating whether maybe I should just replace these. But uh, all right, now we get to figure out how this hole comes apart. At least it, you know, we get more access to it. Well, I actually didn't need to press for this. Um, I used a brass mallet, and I smacked that a few times by kind of holding here, and it popped. So it all actually came came apart. And you can see, that's the old bearing basket. You can see it's completely destroyed. So, for some reason we don't know why the oil wasn't getting all the way down here, but this doesn't look like it's been fresh oil for a while. And this seal looks like it's trashed too, so I don't know if moisture got into it or what. But, uh, now let's just clean everything up and uh, we'll get the races and stuff out of that. And then uh, we'll start putting it back together. All right, I wanted to show you quick. I tried putting this guy on and getting this in the press, but it's just, this is too wide and I can't turn it right. And I was having a difficult time. So one of the tricks you can do is take an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel and put a slit almost the whole way through, not completely through. Then take a, a cold chisel, put it right in that, smack it with a hammer, and it'll crack it. I'll try to get you in it for a close-up. But you can see it cracked it right along there. So now this thing will come right off. The other thing you can see is, you know, I didn't cut the whole way through. That way I didn't mark up this shaft at all. So it's a little trick for you. Wow. So this is the original seal and, you know, some of it's for me banging around, but man, is it in bad shape. Also uh, looking at the seal service don't look the greatest here. So I wanted to show you quick that, uh, you know, we got the spindle here. All cleaned up, all the stuff off of it. I'm probably going to take and um, probably just sandblast or bead blast this, uh, this section here. You know, I want to clean up where the races and stuff sit. And uh, that's all. Uh, bead blast won't hurt it too much, so... I just felt something there and it looks like someone did change the bearings at this one time because that's a that's a torch mark and that's where the one bearing sits is right there so that's interesting but this still shouldn't hurt anything so next we're going to work on this piece here and getting all these bearings and races out and this thing's packed with grease so it's going to be a miserable mess so let's set this aside get this guy up here now this is the same is the one piece of just come off that uh, spindle and all this is is a seal lip or a seal spacer slash lip so there you can see that there are other bearings in there or the other seal I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and just put this in the vise like this to help hold it for us but let's get this seal out of here. And I'm going to get my angle grinder out of here too. And uh, 
Here's the one bearing. And all this in here is grease. So I'm going to find something to put that in and we'll be right back. So I was using the putting knife here and I got a lot of the grease out. I think we're going to try to go ahead and get this uh, brace out of here. So I'm going to use a slide hammer bearing puller. See if we can maybe knock it out this way. out that way so <clears throat> the race come out no problem then the casting itself you might not be able to see this but it's got recesses cut in here purposely so you can get behind that race to knock them out all right everybody you can see I got everything here cleaned up um, this don't look too bad I'm gonna go ahead and polish it up you know get it cleaned up a little bit better than what it is and then this housing there is an issue with it i'm not sure what i'm going to do but if you can see it this is pushed in so i'm going to wait till i get the new seal but i'm probably going to have to set this up in the mill or the lathe and uh we're going to have to bore that and get that trued back up um so that's one issue that we have You might be wondering why, you know, I cleaned up all these bearings, all the old ones and stuff. And honestly, the main reason is, is because I can't find this thing on, on the internet. I did find ones that are close to it, but I wanted to make sure that the bearings were the same as what I found online and that they actually do are the same. So that's a really good plus. But the main reason was, is to find part numbers. This in here actually had it right on the side here. Bearings itself did not. So what was nice about that is since I had the shaft, I could measure it. So I, I mic'd it, got all the dimensions I need, and then went in and found it. Um, one of the things that I did find that is very helpful whenever you're trying to find part numbers on stuff, this is a seal off of it here. You probably can't see that. But you can see it says, looks like 07653. One of the tricks that I found to find part numbers on stuff that's a little bit rusty is, you know, clean it up, then take a Sharpie and go over top of it, and then take a light sandpaper and go over it. And a lot of times you can see, you know, stuff come out like right there, stamped USA. It works. So, off camera, I went ahead and cleaned up all the bolts, chased all the threads on that stuff. Um, on these plates that mount it, I chased all those threads, got those all cleaned up. So basically all this bearing, race and stuff, this stuff is all junk now because we won't need it anymore because I got the parts on order. So this all can go in the trash. So one of the issues I did see 
is these are spacers, but they are also used for the seal. And they are pitted pretty bad, so I haven't decided what I'm going to do with them yet. Um, I'm actually thinking about making two new ones, but I haven't got that far. Um, I didn't chase the threads in this yet, but I will chase them just to make sure that they're good. So I went to get, or went to chase the threads on this, and uh, lo and behold, we got a broken off bolt in here. This is cracked out. It's not going to be an issue. Uh, there's plenty of threads in here, and the way this works is, you know, this pulley goes on, or this hub goes on here, and it lines up with those three. And then as this is drawn in, it it's tapered shaft, tapered shaft, so it pulls it tight, and that's how it, it goes together. So what I'm going to do to get this bolt out, and this is another trick that I found that works very well, is if you can get to the back side, which obviously I can, we're going to take a drill bit that's the size for the, the thread, and we're going to go in here and drill it and get a spot on there. Once we get a spot on there, then I'm going to take a smaller drill bit, and it should go right to that spot. Basically what it's doing is makes, making a setter mark for me. So then I'm going to take and drill that hole the whole way through, and I might even go ahead and put this one in. If it'll break free, it should spin it out the bottom. All we can do is try. So why don't we start doing that? Okay, so we're over here at the drill press. I got everything set up here. So why don't we start spotting and see if we get a, a spot on that down there. Here's some lube, we'll spray some lube down in there. Okay, I'm sure that's enough to spot it. I see some metal chips on there. So we'll pull this out. And we'll swap this drill bit out now to a smaller one. In fact, I'm gonna go pretty small. Spray some more lube down in there. And hopefully it'll find that, which it looks like it's going to, and center up on it. There it's through. I don't know how well you can see that, but if you look, that drill hole is directly in the center of that bolt. So that's that's a real good sign. That's a real good plus. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a next size larger drill bit in, and um, we'll try to get it drilled all the way out. And we'll just keep stepping it up. Hopefully it'll break free. I don't know if it will or not, but hopefully it will. And it didn't spin it out. So we're gonna have to keep stepping it up all the way up. didn't spin it out well it's gonna be a little bit more fun than we thought well I got it out um, after using a pick a chisel and a little bit of a hammer I got it out the threads don't look the greatest but you can see it might be hard to see but you know the curls did come out which is a good sign 
threads seem a little bit loose. It's probably nothing I did. It's just probably the way the bolt is. But I think it'll be fine. There was only these two holding on on before, so this extra one, even if it's at 50% thread, you know, it's still going to hold plenty. So next things next is we're probably going to go ahead and take and um, go ahead and paint these up real quick. I haven't decided. Uh, I don't know what kind of paint I have over there, but I'm not going to use anything special. It doesn't matter because you won't see this. You only see the top of the pulley. But if I do have a yellow or an orange, I will go ahead and paint it that. But if I don't, if I have purple over there, that's what's going to get painted. You know, I, at least it will give it some protection. So then the next thing we'll probably work on after that is either these pins or this actually isn't too bad a shape. It just needs some filing and stuff done on it just to help clean it up on some spots. But uh, otherwise, it's not in that bad a shape. And then it's these rings, you know, where the seal's supposed to ride it. I'm afraid that that would rip a seal out right away. So, all right, let me get to it, and uh, I'll bring you back. 